So we're in one of my new yards getting on some pollen sub, pollen substitute, if you want to call it, if you want to be picky like they all are. Anyway, this is what I do, this is why I do it. Hope you're having a good day. Just loading all the eeks on, ready for feeding. These fit on top of the six frame dead on nuke boxes, so I'm going to be putting that on. And inside, each one's going to have a pollen sub and one of these to push down to keep the heat in before the roof goes back on. Loads to do. Have a good day. So this is how I add my pollen sub to my bees. Um, I've got some, these are all six frame nukes. Those have had their eeks put on and pollen sub on. You can see these haven't, okay? So that is the winter. We just had a bit of a squall come through. So they've all gone back inside. There's a few bees flying, but not a lot now. Overall, the clusters are okay and the colonies are fine. I just need to get this protein on because the, the winter is far from over, but they're flying between weather. So that to me is the reason to put this pollen sub on. So what I do with these, I've got these eeks that are um, perfectly made for this job. They're basically, um, one end fits over the top of the hive and the top end reciprocates the fit of the lid. So you can see that they're absolutely perfect for this job. The only thing is they can get a little bit cold. So I put an aluminum sheet inside and that just keeps the heat in. So I'll just take this off and there's a nice colony of bees. These are a bit runny, but they've probably just heard me knock the hive before but they're fine, they're actually quite nice now. So I'll just do one hand. I'll just score the pollen sub a little bit like that. That's all you need to do, just to show them where it is. I put the pollen sub just like that. Now the important thing is if you've got bees out, you've got to give them an access to get back in. So they've got a couple of holes here anyway. And you can see this is a good colony. There's bees all the way through this top section, which immediately says to me, this is a cracking colony. It's overwintered well. What's the weight like? It's still got a good weight to it. That's exactly what I want to see. I don't want bees that are light as a feather and huge because that means they've not wintered well, but they're still alive at the end of the day. This pollen sub they'll get cracking on. On goes the eek. So that now is on and sealed, you see. So it's basically extended the length of the hive up and it's made a compartment inside. I use these eeks for feeding in the summer. They're absolutely brilliant. The only downside is, as I said, I like to put an aluminium sheet on. So what it does is just helps reflect any heat back in from the top of the colony, especially in the spring when it's cold. So these eeks, these aluminium sheets were just made for the top of uh, my hive when I use polystyrene for the eeks instead. But this time I'm using actually just um, uh, using these wooden eeks because it's actually so much easier for me and polystyrene is very bulky. These can sit in the back of my truck. I think you can probably see the other ones in the back of the truck. And all I do then is carry some aluminium sheets. And I just kind of push them down like that and it just seals nicely around the pollen sub, reflects the heat back in and then the roof goes back on. So they still get protection and the roof fits on snugly like that. They all do go on. So you end up with every roof snugly on as if it's like completely sealed. You can see all those have got their roofs on. And to me, that's just a great compromise because it means that I can go away now and rest on the fact that they've got some feed. They've got that extra bit right above the colony where they need it. And they will start eating away at that now and they'll be able to use that protein and they'll be able to get away while the weather's atrocious. And then weather is good, they can then go out and fly and they will be able to use to have, have a you know a toilet run so it's the best case scenario for the moment in about three or four weeks these will all be moved they'll all be transferred into hives but at the moment we've got this very fragile period where it's kind of warm enough for them to forage but they're struggling to forage so that, and the, the queens are starting to lay because i know the daylight's getting longer and the temperature generally is getting better and there's this intensity. We've just got that feeling now that the bees are starting to do stuff. You know, it's, it's the end of February this week and the bees are really getting out. You, you can just sense it when you walk around in April. The minute you get a burst of sunshine, they're out. They're foraging in 9, 10, 11 degrees, which is pretty remarkable. So we know they need that pollen. And you've got to remember as well that this time of year, is really critical with the feed levels but this year particularly we've got more feed than we've ever had in the colonies but less bees and smaller colonies due to our pollen dearth last autumn and last summer so this is why i'm putting on protein now and just monitoring everything carefully last summer 
everything started in April the 1st, April the 2nd. They were bringing in nectar, which was unbelievable. The year before, we had to feed in mid-April because there was nothing around and it was cold. So it just shows you the differences you get with, with the years. So these are done. I've now got to do this line here and that line there, and then I'm finished. But I'm just about, well, I am delighted that this is on now because this was the apiary. You know, when you get an apiary, you're meaning to get to and you haven't had a chance, but you must get there. Well, everything's booming, everything's alive, and I'm really pleased because uh, these are the nukes that are going to cover my winter losses. And I've got a lot of winter losses, as you probably know, so it's going to help me a huge amount. I've got a couple of so I've got a couple of colonies here that are going to need pollen sub as well. So how can I get that pollen sub onto these colonies without having an eek? I don't really have many eeks for these size boxes. So what I'm doing is I'm using an upturned feeder. So we basically put the pollen sub on top of the colony as we were doing with the nukes. And then we use an upturned feeder to create the space. The plastic stays in place. Now I'm probably going to get stung doing this because as you can see, I haven't got all my gear on and I've got no smoke lit, but I'm going to show you how we do it. Uh, if there's any language, please forgive me, but it's like shitty weather and the bees are going to be absolutely pants. But I'll show you anyhow how we do this because I've got all the other apiaries to do. It's just a way of getting on pollen sub that keeps the bees warm so they can take it up in their own time. And it's quick and, you, and it's using material we've already got. So here we have a beautiful colony. It's really warm on top. And I know these bees are going to be really pissy because it's just shitty weather. So I'm going to be as quick as I can, but I'll show you what I do. Here's my pollen sub. You basically lift up the front quickly, put it on top, close that back down as quick as you can. And you use your feeder. This is a Nico feeder. Excuse me, it's a bit dirty, but it makes no difference. Yeah, it goes upside down like this. Job done. So you've got the feed on and sorry you've got the pollen sub on and the bees now can basically heat that little space and they're only really heating this space because that's where the dome of plastic was i saw you i showed you putting it on so it really does a great job because it compartmentalizes the the feed so you're not having to heat the whole thing you're only heating this little bit and then on top of that we put our insulation back on and our polystyrene and then the roof goes back onto that. I mean, it's like a great thing. The bees heat it up. You saw the size of that cluster. That's a big cluster. They're going to need food. If it was nice weather, I would honestly like to take it apart, but it's only February. I just want to get feed on and give them to it while I can. There you go. That's how we get feed on to colonies when you've just got feeders left. So um, it works well for me and I can go away now, not literally go away, but I can leave this apiary knowing that all these are fed and done and I've got something to munch on and it's absolutely great news and reassuring that that is because this time of year it's so up and down and our bees struggled so much this winter I feel we're really doing the best thing we possibly can.